From the Fox Studios in downtown Panama City, it's News View with Lee Sullivan. Let's talk about your endangered freedoms. News and views with an attitude. That's bad. Good evening. It's News View. I'm Lee Sullivan. Thank you for having me in. It is my privilege this evening to welcome Jensen Hart to the show. She uh, uh, is uh, Miss Tennessee International, and when you see her, you will think, what an extraordinarily handsome man with what an exceptionally beautiful young lady. I think I finally found somebody <laughs> that would make my show complete. Thank you for coming on. Glad to be here. We, we do make a good pair, don't we? <laughs> I think so, yes, ma'am. I, I, unfortunately, I'm old enough to be your grandfather, but with that exception, I think we are very handsome. Thank it's all you. the rage. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it is sometimes. Oh, well, listen, I, I appreciate you taking the time. And we were talking before we went on camera about the different types of beauty pageants, and, and you brought out an interesting point. Talk with me a little bit about that. Oh, sure. I liken it a lot to different different leagues, say, in a sport. So you have high school and college and, and professional basketball. You play in a slightly different version of the same game, and you play for a different championship. And that's a lot how different systems and pageants are. So you're familiar with the USA and the America systems. The international system is pretty unique in that it's very, very platform based. So each of us work essentially with a cause that we care about and have, have dedicated a lot of our lives and will continue to do so after the year is over to a particular cause. So personally, I work with global health issues. A lot of girls will work with everything from the American Cancer Society to the American Humane Society. So that's a little bit of how we differ. And then I'll be competing for Miss International in July. Well, great, and and you the other interesting point that you made when we were speaking is your focus is on health. You graduate from Vanderbilt, yes, sir. and uh, you're getting ready to go to med school in Tennessee. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, <clears throat> which means you're a whole lot brighter than I ever hoped to be. So as we move past that, y your focus is on uh, health, uh, and you've had an opportunity to work with uh, a couple of, and you said. The good thing about the platform base is it gave you a, an opportunity to speak to those issues that you were passionate about and you were involved in. Talk with me a little bit about the health aspect there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I work specifically with global health and I actually had the opportunity to be an intern with the Senate when our health care legislation was going out. And what I get a lot of is why why do we care about global health? We have We have enough issues, it's a buzzword here that kind of thing. And what I came to kind of realize as I got into working with Global Health, I went down to Nicaragua, went down to Colombia. When I got into those things, I realized that we're, we're worried about whether or not you get tested for breast cancer at 45 or 50 or whether that's getting moved back. There's no hospitals in a lot of these areas. There's no, you have a heart attack, you die. You die. Exactly. So, you know, when people ask me why I spend any effort on that when we have our own problems, that's, that's kind of what I have to lean on is that you have to look at the sheer spectrum of healthcare and working with that. So and what I do a lot of is working with domestic organizations that support clinics and, and hospitals and, and healthcare facilities abroad and just promoting the idea that you don't have to go there. You don't have to spend the resources, you don't have to have money to fly to, to make a measurable difference in the health of a community that is in, you know, Peru or Nicaragua or parts of Mexico, parts of Southeast Asia. The, there is, uh, there, there probably a, a lot, there's probably a lot more of that than people might realize. I mean, the, the people that are dedicated and, and I mean, every now and then you'll see a special on television where doctors go with cleft palates and, and, and those types of things. And, and it's hard to imagine where we're, where we're from, the humbling significance that that kind of treatment makes to those people because as you say I mean that there, there, there is no alternative uh, other than what comes from this country. one of the best things this country does I think it squanders money it pays despots it does a lot of crummy things but I think that is a quality thing that we do that's yeah. absolutely true and there are a lot of organizations that really capitalize on like you said w where we do squander and where we do have our, our pitfalls and MedShare is one of them. It's an organization I just recently started working with. And basically their entire 
Their entire reason for being is to make our surplus meet the need of the rest of the world. So they've got huge centers in Northern California and in Atlanta, actually, where I'm from originally. And what they do is they go around to hospitals and collect what they would throw away, recycle, repackage, and send it mm. out to clinics right. around the world. So, and it usually isn't used. It usually just was in a packet of things that was used. So they've, to date, done over $70 million worth of supplies that would have ended up in landfills is now in clinics around the world. So, <coughs> like you said, there are a lot more of that, those types of organizations going on than people really realize. So, what came first? Did I mean, at what point in time did you decide that you would like to be a physician? Well, I was a surgeon for my first Halloween, but I think that was a little <laughs> bit early. Um, um, and that's, hell, I that's have, where I went wrong, you know, what I was for my first well, Halloween. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't have really been a ninja, which was my second Halloween. But, um, no, I, it's something I've always had an interest in and just continued to nurture that through elementary school, high school, and then through university. And, and in having a little bit more tangible experiences, I've had the opportunity to work in a couple of ORs, I've had the opportunity to be in, you know, in the hospital really seeing how it's done and seeing what a life of it really would mean. And, and it's just very much what I'm supposed to do. You know, it, it has got to be uh, one of the most extraordinary uh, opportunities and uh, well-being to participate in making someone healthy or helping them become healthy and it's also got to be absolutely distressful when you can't do that and you lose somebody uh, so there are they're both diametric ends of that spectrum that you have to deal with uh, and and it's you know I mean I don't even like to be around my wife when she's sick you know what I'm saying <laughs> And she doesn't like to be around me at all, whether I'm sick or not. But it, it takes it takes a psyche, does it not, to be able to, to work well and to, to, to embrace that kind of work? Well, people always say it takes a very specific type of person. You have to be both very smart and, and in a lot of ways very dumb to, to sign on right. for something like that. And like you said, it is very much a dichotomy. The highs are very high, the lows are very low. And you know, if you have the type of personality where you can bring yourself back to that equilibrium, remember why you're doing what you're doing, then you're gonna you're gonna do well in the profession. So, all about to I'm about to find out whether or not I have those the qualities right stuff. exactly. <laughs> Jensen Hall.